side. Good morning and welcome to Insurance Apprentice 2016. We're here for the first session of uh, uh, the program and it gives me particular a pleasure to welcome the eight apprentices that have made it through a very strenuous and rigorous selection process. My fellow judge for the, for the whole of the program would be Voyo Lee on my left hand side. Thank you Judge. Uh, good day apprentices. Congratulations to everybody who's made it so far. My role is quite simple. I'm the eyes on the ground, so I'll be watching you quite closely. My advice to you is during all the tasks, use your time wisely and also use the opportunity to engage the panelists and ask questions. So good luck. On my right hand side, I have Simon Coleman of SHA Specialist Underwriters. Uh, he will be presenting you with the first task. Today you'll be playing the insurance broker and your job will be to advise your client on the appropriate covers. Those of you that are insurance brokers, please refrain from going to lunch or playing golf during the task. <laughs> and those of you that work for insurance companies, congratulations on getting a real job. <laughs> the expectations are high. It is a tricky task. Uh, you will be meeting with a client shortly who will give you a little bit more information of what's required of you. Uh, good luck. For this session, the first session, uh, Group A would comprise of Alicia, Andre, Selena, and Chris, and Group B, Karabu, Priya, Richard, and Unati. On that note, I would uh, like to wish you well, and you are dismissed. How's it? Gak. Gak's the name. Hi, hello. Gak, hello. Gak is the name. Hello, Selena. Hello, Alicia. Yes, thank you. Gak. Yeah. It's Gak. K A C K. The C K is at the end, not at the beginning. Okay, we run a construction business. We're doing a bit of industrial stuff now. We want to do more of that. Um, turnover of the business is, is pretty close to 100 million. Uh, I've got 100 guys now working for me. I've got to tell you this. I don't really like insurance people. So he said to me, you need to move away from this multi-mark thing. Yeah, I'm, I'm not really sold on this whole professional advising. I think you Oaks are going to try and rip me off. There's all these laws that I keep reading about in the newspaper. The Consumer Protection Act. Does this apply to me? There's this other thing now called Poppy. Why must the liability limit that I have be bigger than the actual job size? You know, and my clients are asking me to guarantee that my guys are going to be on site every day. So I do worry about the labor stuff. The CCMA, I hear the story from a couple of other guys. They've had to go there. It's not a lack of place. A lot of our deals we just do on a handshake. Okay, I don't want to be spending a lot of money on insurance. There's probably a bunch of covers that I could have, but I can't necessarily afford all of it. You've got to convince me that I need the cover, first of all. You've got to tell me what the right covers are. And I want you to tell me which ones I should be looking at if I can't afford all of them. I have to say we've got two really exciting groups today. The CRC group have certainly been asking a lot more questions uh, of me as the mentor. They seem to be having a little bit more structure in how they're doing things. The other group, I got the impression that Karabo and uh, Unati were kind of going off on in one direction. And, uh, and then Priya and Richard seem to be doing their own thing, also not even working together. I think what's really interesting about these two groups is how differently they approach things. So, you know, if we look at the way they handled the interview with the client, I'd say that CRC were much stronger. They asked a lot of questions, got to know a little bit more about the client. Um, the other group, being SRS, definitely spend more time pitching themselves than getting to understand uh, the client and I think that's a mistake that a lot of people make in our industry however they really have no problem with their confidence and pitching themselves so I think when we get to presentation stage it's going to be really interesting to see if both groups can kind of pick up their game on the bits that they're lacking at the moment. 
Hop. Welcome back team. First matter that I'd like to raise is whether you have decided on a name for your team. Maybe please have it if you have. Yes, we have. Our team name is going to be Specialist Risk Solutions, SRS. Thank you very much. Right, over to you. Good afternoon, Mr. Kirk and to your associates. Thank you for meeting with us. We have picked up from your profile that 70% of your business is construction uh, related. Your major risk there is third party claims that may arise as a result of injury or death of third parties as well as damage to, to third party properties at the contract site. We've also picked up that your, your, your major risk having a hundred employees in your organization is death or injury to your employees and it's a risk that we really need to look at because it is also regulated by uh, different legislation. You have different regulations and changing legislation that are going to affect you. And it's important that we address these and we find ways to, to manage that risk. One of the um, risk exposures is road risk liability. Another important cover that we feel is actually pertinent, uh, which would act more as a top-up cover to uh, the legislated court. Um, is group personal accident. And the other cover that we've identified, again, as an optional cover should your situation improve, is products inefficacy. And also um, cyber liability, which obviously will protect you uh, should there be any breaches uh, into your system by outsiders or third parties. Why is that relevant for my business? During our first meeting, you expressed concerns with regard, with regard to legal uh, laws that, that could affect your company and the productivity of your company. So um, with your company you have hundreds of employees and you have a lot of clients and we assume that you're not being paid cash, that it is EFT transactions and you have their bank accounts and you have their details. So that is where the cyber liability comes into play. Um, you know, if anyone had to hack your systems and that information would be leaked. So with the uh, CPA as well it could affect your company. If a client is dissatisfied with a product, um, then they could refer it. And these are not just individuals, but they're also businesses with, which have a turnover less than two million. Okay, and then we have the LRA, which is the Labor Relations Act, which addresses sexual harassment, unfair dismissal, as well sexual as- Sexual harassment's a big problem at <laughs> <in> construction <laughs> company. <laughs> we can imagine. You know, we wear those low-hanging pants. <laughs> <laughs> it's just inviting trouble. Some of the things that we do to try and simplify our experience with you, because at the end of the day, that's what we're here for, um, is apart from the experience brokers which you've just dealt with, you, know, you can see there's a lot of effort that's gone into the presentation on that. Uh, we've got convenient and innovative channels, facilities that are there for us to communicate with you, as well as for you to self-manage your policy if you don't like the way our brokers um, interact with you. Did you get the impression that I was the kind of guy that would take advantage of this? The nature of your work is not in an office. So this is where you work in, in remote areas and you may have a claim and you don't have the paperwork or you're not able to submit those claims at that point. How does the Consumer Protection Act apply to my business? So um, you are a retailer as well as within construction. So the Consumer Protection Act would definitely apply and you are providing service as well as product. So you, in terms of your businesses, you are selling to individuals as well as to companies. Uh, the Consumer Protection Act covers and protects both consumers, which are individuals as well as businesses. Um, like I've indicated, we have a turnover less than two million. If I don't, if I don't manufacture any of the products that I sell, say in my in my retail business, surely that's the manufacturer's problem. Should I still be worried about that in my business as the retailer? Yes, you should, because the CPA does still encompass suppliers, which you are, in terms of the retail business. So I can't just pass the buck down to the manufacturer. <laughs> Unfortunately, Unfortunately not. CPA actually allows um, consumers um, the liberty to, to take on anyone uh, on the supply chain. Okay, thank you very much. So uh, we would like you to conclude now with your um, recommendations. Uh, and uh, you know, obviously, there will be a lot of emphasis on that. We have decided that the critical covers that you must take is uh, on the one hand, you, you'll need broad form liability cover. You also can get contractors third party liability cover. 
which will provide you uh, with cover for your contract works, this is going to be more comprehensive. And that is where we can include extensions such as the road risk liability covers. The contractor's liability cover, you will find that as it, it is also at times a contractual requirement. You know, so your employers may require you to have a contractor liability. So if you have a, an annual policy, that will take care of uh, that uh, that part of your, your requirements. So I wouldn't have to speak to the insurance company every time I take on a new project? That is quite right, yes. Okay. So under your broad form uh, liability cover, we recommend that uh, we ensure that there's directors and officers cover there, that we, we have product recall cover, make sure that you have that extension there. You want the directors and officers cover is, does that, is that under the broad form? Correct, that is under the Not a separate policy? No, no, no. Thank you very much. Can you excuse, thank you. Thanks. Mm -hmm. I think we did pretty good. Um, I think we managed to touch on the most critical points. What would increase our prospects of winning uh, this round, uh, I think, was the innovation idea. The idea for uh, social media was Richard's idea. If it's really a case that you know there, there needs to be someone who needs to be sent home uh, from the team, um, it'll probably be um, who difficult one. Well, it'll probably be be, uh, be um, Richard. I believe today's task went very well. The only thing that sort of um, affected us was the time limit. I think we could have managed the time a bit better. I stood out as a leader uh, because I was able to support from the back. So if I had to vote someone off on uh, well, after today's task, I think it would have to be Priya. I believe that we should be the winning team because I think that we work together very well. I feel that I contributed in terms of the legal aspect of it. I think Garabo was very impressive. Um, I think that of our team, I think maybe Richard didn't contribute a lot. I think that we would ha it would have to be him on this task. It was a very challenging task. The team, they, they relied on me for leadership in this task. The role that I played in, in the task was just to refocus the team back on what is required of us. Totally based on today's challenge and nothing else, uh, it, would, it would on my side be Richard.